teaching on uh, do we always have to obey the law of the land. I love that term. It's primarily because uh, so many preach and teach just like they say, judge not, they use this term as a catch-all phrase uh, to let everyone know you've got to obey the law of the land as if that's something absolute and as if that is a biblical principle. <clears throat> and I've done the best I could with uh, both the computer search and uh, through years and, in fact, decades of reading the Bible, I can't find it anywhere in the Bible. It's been hard for me to locate. The closest that we have is Romans 13. Now, I like to read this, and this is where that overarching principle that seems to be a catch-all phrase where we deposit this excuse, I call it an excuse, because it's just simply a way for us to passively accept anything that someone says, this is the law, this is what's legal, and this is what we have to do, regardless of what, to what the Bible says. In Romans 13, it does say, let every soul be subject to the governing authorities. Now, if you stop there, you could say, well, then that means you've got to always obey the law of the land. That's an absolute. That's a moral absolute. But there's more verses. For there is no authority except from God. Now, if you read that and carefully read that, it says that all authority comes from God. So we know where the authority comes from. Where do we find out about God's authority? In the, book. In the Bible. So this Bible is the source for all authority, both civil, moral, in every way. This covers it all. And the authorities that exist are appointed by God. Therefore, whoever resists the authority resists the ordinance of God, and those who resist will bring judgment on themselves. Verse 3, For rulers are not a terror to good works, but to evil. So rulers are put here to punish evil. That's their job. They're here to get the evil out of the land because God does not want evil people running loose on the land. We don't want evil people running loose on the land. I don't. And, of course, evil people are those who run around with Bibles, brandishing Bibles, right? Those are the ones we need to be scared of. People that pull Bibles out are dangerous, right? Those are the threats to society. We need to hide from those evil Bible thumpers, bitter clingers, I guess we'd be called. Rulers are not a terror to good works, but to evil. Do you want to be unafraid of the authority? Do what is good, and you'll have praise from the same. For he is God's minister to you for good. But if you do evil, be afraid, for he does not bear the sword in vain. For he is God's minister, an avenger to execute wrath on him who practices evil. Again, he confirms it. The responsibility of government is to be God's minister to execute wrath on the ones that do evil. That's right. Their responsibility stops there. That's the authority they're given by God is to execute wrath on the evil. Evildoers, criminals. Does it say to police the schools and make sure that no one says anything? No. no. It doesn't have anything to do with schools or education. Does it say he needs to be carrying food boxes around and distributing food boxes? No. So God's minister that has authority to operate under God's authority, his job is to execute wrath on the evildoer, the criminal. The one that breaks God's law. What's God's law? Ten Commandments. Ten Commandments. There's His authority. This makes it very simple. And for me, it makes it very direct. What His job is. What His job is supposed to be. It limits their job. So there's no confusion about it. It doesn't have anything to do with policing words. Or policing school children. Or wrapping them on the nose for carrying a cross around. In fact, it says he's God's minister to execute wrath on the evildoer. The one who is anti-Christ. The one who's anti-God. What do y'all think? That's right. Just going way off the Amen. beam here. So it doesn't sound like anyone has any authority to tell us we cannot read the Bible. No one has the authority to execute wrath on a Christian who's following God's word. Because if he's doing good, he's actually rewarded. You must be subject not only because of wrath, but for conscience sake. So we've got to be subject for conscience sake, which means we've got to be doing good. We don't want to be punished for doing evil. 
Our job is to walk righteous and to live righteous, to do what is right, not what is evil. So when government goes out of its responsibility, and government's run by men, right? Some good, some bad. When the bad guys get in charge, we're in trouble because they're willing to do evil. But that doesn't mean he's operating under God's authority. He's doing his own business under his own will and going against God's will. He should be punished, therefore. His job is to do what is right. When he doesn't do his job, then we've got to have another official that punishes him because the job of government is to always punish the evildoer. Not the ones doing good. Not kids going to school praying. It Amen. has nothing right. to do with that whatsoever. It has nothing to do with a teacher who's a Christian praying. No one has any authority under God. Now under Satan you do. You can do whatever you want under Satan because you're going to get punished anyway. You're condemned. But as far as God is concerned, you have no authority and no right to punish those who do what is right. To obey the law of the land, first you've got to obey the laws of God. Yes, I mean. <laughs> right? That's right. In fact, we got a little bit. This is off off of this Romans, uh, but in Acts chapter five, Acts chapter five deals with some guys that were faced with a decision. There was two fellows that were out doing some good work. They were preaching and teaching. And uh, happened to be Peter and John. Let's start in the middle of it. They were put in prison, and then, of course, some angels got them out <laughs> and let them out, and they went back out into the temple and started preaching. And you can pick up in the middle of the uh, subject in verse 25, so one came and told him, saying, Look, the men whom you put in prison are standing in the temple and teaching the people. After they had been put in prison for that, told by the authorities they couldn't do it. Now, if they were violating God's command, they should have been put in prison and, and put to death because they violated God's command. But instead, they went back out and went right back to the place where they were arrested and told not to be by the authorities by the authorities who were in power. Then the captain went, in verse 26, with the officers and brought them without violence, for they feared the people, lest they should be stoned. And when they brought them, they set them before the council, and the high priest asked them, saying, Did we not strictly command you not to teach in this name? And look, you have filled Jerusalem with your doctrine and intend to bring this man's blood on us. But Peter and the other apostles answered and said, We ought to obey God rather than men. Amen. Uh oh. Uh, is this in the Bible? Well, I want you to let them know, too, that this is going to be his continuous teaching. And it, yeah. No, we, well, okay. Well, continuous teaching and uh, what you're trying to do with this teaching. Yeah, we, we tried to shorten it a little, and, and that's impossible with me. I'm kind of like Brother Paul. Whenever he says, therefore, he usually goes on for two more chapters. So he's. <laughs> This is going to be an ongoing teaching. <clears throat> In verse 30, he says, The God of our fathers raised up Jesus, whom you murdered and hanged on a tree. Him God has exalted to his right hand to be prince and savior, to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. And we are his witnesses to these things, and so also is the Holy Spirit, whom God has given to those who obey him. So if you want to obey God and do what's right, you cannot but help speak in this name. And anyone who dare has the nerve, the unmitigated nerve to tell you not to, ought to fear because the wrath of Almighty God is going to come against them. That's the law of the land. And that's what we ought to obey. Not these anti-Christian league Amen. of usurpers. They don't have a clue what they're talking about. They don't even know what the word religion means. Right. Because it doesn't mean Christianity. This is the law of the land. And Him we ought to obey. This is who Amen. we ought to obey. Amen. 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 Okay. Amen. Thank you.